Juana Seri Tan, and I am a wildlife rehabilitator at International Bird Rescue. In today's anatomy lesson, we'll be talking about bird feet. There are many types of bird feet and many amazing ways that birds use them. So we're gonna focus on the three main types of bird feet that we see in care. Perching feet, webbed feet, and feet with lobed toes. So let's start with perching feet. Birds with perching feet have flexible, non-webbed toes that can grasp a perch, walk on the ground, and many other tasks, depending on what kind of bird we're talking about. Can you think of birds that need to walk on the ground and hold on to perches? I'll give you a second to think about it, but you can also pause and talk to a buddy if you would like. So there are lots of birds that have perching feet. Some examples that you might have said are sparrows, pigeons, hawks, and herons. Although all of those kinds of birds perch, they live very different lives and use their feet in very different ways. For example, hawks can catch and hold on to their prey with their feet, while sparrows can hop on the ground and scratch in the dirt for food. When we have perching birds in care, we provide them with sticks and branches of varying shapes and sizes to make sure they have a comfortable place to rest. Now, bitterns have an interesting adaptation that we do not see on every perching foot. The toenail on the third toe on each foot has a comb-like structure that helps the bird preen, which means to arrange its feathers. Now, Let's talk about webbed feet. Webbed feet have toes that are connected by soft folds of skin or webbing. You've probably seen webbed feet on the ducks and geese at your local park or on the gulls and pelicans at the beach. Now, why do you think a bird would benefit from having webbing on their toes? Again, I'll give you a second or you can pause and talk to a friend. If you have ever seen someone snorkeling or scuba diving, or gone snorkeling yourself, you have probably put flippers on your feet. Those flippers gave your feet a large, flat surface to kick into the water, which helped you go faster and move more easily. That's exactly what webbing helps birds with, too. The webbing gives their feet more surface area to paddle with in the water. Birds like cormorants, Gulls and ducks have webbed feet, and they're housed in enclosures where they have the option to swim or stand on dry ground. On the other hand, some ocean-dwelling birds like loons and murres live almost their entire lives on the water. So they're housed in large pools where they can swim and dive all the time. When we decide what enclosures to keep our patients in, we have to consider their feet and the rest of their biology. Now, webbing is not the only adaptation that helps birds swim. Some swimming birds, such as coots and grebes, have lobed toes instead. These specialized toes are perfect for foot-propelled swimming. Remember what I said about enclosures? Coots are housed in enclosures with dry ground and water, while grebes are housed in our large pools to swim and dive all the time. Bird feet are unique from species to species. There are variations in the number of toes, position of those toes, the length of the toenails, the amount of webbing, and so on and so forth. As rehabilitators, we strive to provide every patient with the best possible care and release them back into the wild strong and healthy. This means that we need to care for every bit of the animal, from the end of their beak to the tips of their toes. I hope you've enjoyed this dip into the water of bird feet. The best part is there is so much more to learn. Have fun, and the next time that you see a bird in the wild, take a moment to check out their feet.